Okay, today's the day, 16th of May. This is, I think, the day that the GCSEs officially start, so there's probably some kids right now. Well, it's kind of late now, but there's probably some kids right now doing some GCSE paper, but not maths, I think. Maths is probably in June. So, um... because I was curious and it's been what two decades Nah, just 15 say 15 years since I did GCSEs I'm curious to see how much they've changed and also how much I remember uh, so I'm gonna attempt each of these subjects here why these ones because these are the ones you don't need to write essays for and I can't grade my own essays that's basically impossible uh, so these ones are kind of easy to mark. So hmm. these are the grades I got as a kid on the left. Hang on. Put some music on. Something relaxing. All right. So they've changed it. It used to be A stars and A's and B's. Now they've changed it to nines and eights and sevens. What the heck is this? Okay, well, that's the first crazy thing that's changed. Um, the first of many, I guess. So nine is the best grade. So I got the best grades for everything except biology. And I'm good at biology, but we had a terrible teacher, so... That's my excuse. And computer science, we didn't have that in my day. So I've predicted that I'll ace maths and computer science. I would hope so. But I wouldn't be surprised if I don't, because there's probably some weird new stuff in GCSE. And everything else, I don't, I don't think I'll do well in. Biology, biology and chemistry, there's a lot of GCSE-specific knowledge, which I don't have. Geography probably is the same. Electronics... Electronics involves a lot of math, so maybe I can do well in electronics. Same goes for physics. Anyway, today's maths. This should be my strongest point, and I'll, I'd be very sad if I don't get a 9. So let's try this. Um, let's turn off the spreadsheet. Uh, let's get the paper up. So... Please write clearly in block capitals, center number. Oh, hang on. Let's just make sure I can write. Is, I spent 10 pounds on this bamboo tablet. Right. The heck? Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, let's say eight, zero. I'm going to have to get used to writing like this. I haven't written anything with a pen for God knows how many years. Um, candidate number. I don't know. I'll, I'll say candidate number two. I don't know. All right. Surname. Three. War name. X. Candidate signature. Uh, that's a signature. All right. I declare this my own work. Tick. Uh. Uh. All right. So this is. Okay, so this is mathematics, higher tier. I'm not doing foundation tier. Higher tier is what I did in the day. Paper one, non-calculator. Good, because I don't really like using calculator anyway. Um, I don't need the formula sheet. There is a formula sheet that you get with this, but I checked it and it's kind of easy. I know all that stuff anyway, so I'm not going to bother unless I find myself needing it. So, okay, don't don't go yet. All right. So, 
trying to juggle. I've got too many USB things plugged in, so uh, I have to use the touchpad on the laptop instead of the mouse. <sighs> I'm nervous. Why am I nervous? This could determine my university. This could determine my career. This, everything rests on this. All right. I start live split. All right, go. Ah, get the thing open. All right, so question one. So called a fraction that is equivalent to four point seven five. So, so that's the same as four and three quarters. So that is the same as sixteen over four plus three over four. So that's nineteen over four. Damn it. 1904. That's that's the circle. Here is vector a. Circle the column vector that represents a. So x column vectors are x followed by y. So it should be plus three minus two. Which of these is a square number and a cube number? So not a hundred, not a thousand, uh, ten, th ten thousand. So ten thousand a hundred squared. No, 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 no. It's this one. That that is thousand squared and a hundred cubed. Okay, good. Circle the reciprocal of 506, just flip it upside down, 6 over 5. Okay, these are easy so far. Use trigonometry to work out the size of angle x. Damn it. Um, <laughs> this, is the, this is the stuff I don't remember. So I remember Sokotoa. It's Sokotoa. So this is we have adjacent and we have hypotenuse, so we want ka, so it's C A H. So is this how it works? Why does it keep Okay, hang on, sorry. So we want so it's cos x equals 9 over 18 equals half. So x equals, oh, I forget now. How does this work? So sine looks like that. Cosine looks like that. So that goes up to one, that goes to a half. Oh, I don't remember. Pi, no. So this is, so it get it hits zero at pi, no. Pi by two. So it hits half at root square root of oh I don't know oh I might lose this one x okay let's just write as much as we can we might get method marks kes to the minus one out of half uh, inverse cosine of half, which is what I don't know, maybe pi over root two, but no, no, it's like, okay, it might be in the form of the book, let's check, because this might be what you're allowed to have, AQA maths formula booklet GCSE, if it's not, then I have to guess, All right, 
Quadrants. We've got the Quadratic Formula. We've got Cos A equals B over C. So they do actually tell you that, which I already knew. But they don't tell you the angles. Oh my god. All right. I'm going to have to take a guess. Oh, we're not doing radians. It's degrees. Oh, so that means it's... 30, because pi by 2 is equivalent to 90, so half would be, oh, it would be either 60 or 30. Oh, I don't, what does that look like? That looks more like 60. Okay, 60, even though it's not to scale. Okay, 60. Okay, I spent too long on that. A and B are scatter graphs. What type of correlation is shown by each graph? Choose from blah, blah, blah. Okay, A is uh, strong negative. And B is no correlation, surely. So apparently there's a whole GCSE on stats. I might actually take that as well, even though I never took it back in the day. Because I don't think we really did it. We did stats in maths. Maybe they've separated them out into two GCSEs. Which is good, actually. Stats is a great thing to cover on its own. Really useful in the real world. I'd argue out of all the maths I learned, stats is probably the one they used the most in real life purposes, including on the job, or just on the internet, or even gaming. Here is some information about 80 people who play in bands, 12. Complete this Venn diagram to represent the information. Okay, so we've got so we've got 80 people who play in bands all together. 12 are singers, but not guitar players. So 12 here, 30% are neither a singer nor a guitar player. So 30% of 80 is what? 24. Um, low food equals life. I'm taking a maths paper. <laughs> I want to see if I can still remember my my school level maths. Eh, well, it's like 5 p.m. for me. It's a reasonable time. And then by the time I finish, I can then have dinner and then maybe play something after. Brain is busted. <laughs> well, this should hopefully be easier than than real coding stuff. But then there are some confusing things. Like I got stuck on this question earlier. I couldn't remember what the inverse cosine of a half is. I think it's 60. I mean, don't tell me if I'm right or wrong. I'm going to mark it at the end. We'll find out what the answer was. But I think it's 60. But I don't remember because, you know, nowadays you'd use calculators for that sort of thing. <laughs> Okay, um, wait, what, what am I supposed to do here? So, luckily I didn't have to represent it in radians because I don't, I, I don't even remember what the pi by whatever things are. It's easier in degrees, I suppose, <laughs> even though at university level you only ever use radians. All right, um, quarter of the guitar players are also singers. Wait, quarter of the guitar players so this big circle here 
is guitar is 12 because that's 24 is the whole thing no 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 it's 80 which is the whole thing hang on no 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 sorry so 24 plus 12 is 36 so g is 80 minus 36 which is 44 okay so we've got 44 is these two sections here so that means uh, a quarter of the guitar players are also singers so we have 11 in here and 33 in here okay that's a quarter of all 44 there. okay that's it we're done No, it's fine, you can chat. Like, I'm not taking this seriously, I'm doing it for fun. And I've got plenty of time, one and a half hours. I think I'll finish early, so. Um, so let's check, does that make sense? So we've got 80 people all together. So that's 24 plus 12, 36, plus 11, 47, plus 33, 80. So it all adds up to 80. 12 are singers but not guitar players. 30% of 80 is 24 okay and quarter of the guitar players also sings yeah that, I think that's right what are these lines for okay I'll probably to show you're working all right the shorter side of a parallelogram has length 6.5 centimeters not bad for beans I'm doing a maths paper. <laughs> because today is the day that the kids in the UK do their GCSEs, so I'm trying to do it as well. But mine's not this year's paper, because obviously I don't have access to that. Mine is paper from two years ago. The shorter side of a parallelogram has length 6.5 centimeters. The length of the shorter side is one ninth of the perimeter. Work out the length of the longer side. What? So we know that is 6.5, and we know that is x, let's say. So we've got 2x plus 13, that's 6.5 times 2, equals... We don't know what the perimeter is. The, the, but the length of the shorter side is one ninth of the perimeter. So that means the perimeter is nine times the shorter side. Nine times 6.5. So x equals nine times 6.5 minus 13 all over two. Oh my God. What's nine times 6.5? Uh, uh, oh, my pen. Uh, so we've got 9 times 5 is 45, carry the 4. 9 times 6 is 54. So it's 58.5 minus 13. 45.5. By the way, Bad for Beans, don't uh, tell me any answers. Uh, after I finish the paper, then I'm going to mark them, and then we can all say the answers. Um, but yeah, the whole point of this is just to see how much I remember. And I, I'm worried I don't remember some things. Yeah, but you're, t you're telling me what to write, aren't you? <laughs> um, I didn't read it because it looked like it was a spoiler. But if it wasn't, then don't worry about it. Uh, where was I? 58.5, 45.5. Um, over 2 so this doesn't look right 22.75 22.5 maybe um, 
go with this. I guess that's not that unreasonable, actually. It just looks ugly, but yeah, I suppose it makes sense. I can come back to this. All the terms of a geometric progression are positive. The second and fourth terms are shown. Work out the first and third terms. 2, 4, 8, 16. It's multiplying by 2 each time. Work out the... F no. That's it. The first two terms of an arithmetic progression are shown. P, 5, P, okay. Some of the first, okay, so we know it's, you add 4P each time. So we get 9P as the next term. The sum of the first three terms is 90. So that's a freaking fast geometric progression. <laughs> well, it was so basic. <laughs> and there weren't even many terms. Um, so we got P, so 1 plus 5 plus 9 equals, so it's 15P equals 90. So P equals 6. How would I get 9P? So in arith arithmetic progression, you add a constant each term. So if you check between the first and two, it's 4p is added, so you have to add 4p again. The key is they're testing, you're not multiplying, you're adding. Oh, Fibonacci sequence, yeah, that's advanced level. <laughs> that's not in GCSE. Well, it could, no, it'd be more, maybe in A level it might come up. All right. The cost of a holiday is 2,400 pounds. I don't spend that much on my holidays, but... I guess that's plausible if you're going with a family for like a week or two. Why can't you be multiplying? Because geometric is multiplying and arithmetic is adding. So that's the key. They're checking that you know you're in that arithmetic too. No. An arithmetic sequence is where you add, and a geometric sequence is where you multiply. And then you have other sequences like harmonic sequence and others that I don't remember the names of. Yeah, but in this context, specifically in sequences, the word arithmetic obviously you can use it to talk about adding and multiplying and stuff, but when when you're talking about sequences, that's just the convention. It means adding. Rana pays a deposit followed by monthly payments in the ratio deposit total monthly pay. Yeah, ratios always confuses me because it's more about convention than anything else. The basic arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiple. Yeah, that's the model. That's the arithmetic model. But when you talk about sequence, it's just a it's just a convention. There's no reason for it. They just it's just when you say the word arithmetic sequence, yeah, it's it has to be adding. <laughs> it's just whatever the, the guy who invented that sequence decided to call it. Maybe it was invented by a guy called arithmetic. I don't know. <laughs> Deposit total of the monthly payments three to five. Okay. So the total of the monthly payments is, you, you would take 2,400, divide by three and times by five. You're basically multiplying it by five over three to get what the total monthly payments is. So that is um, 4,000. So her dep No, 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 no. Forget everything I said there. She pays a deposit followed by monthly payments in the ratio of three to five. Okay. 
She makes six equal monthly payments. Work out. <sighs> okay, fine. So, basically, deposit plus, let's say M is the total of the monthly payments equals 2,400, right? But we also know that M equals 5 over 3 times D. Or actually, better way to think of it is 3M equals 5D. That's what the ratio is telling us. So to find M, Um, so if we take the top one, we can actually say, um, five D, isn't it three D to five M equals three D equals five M? No. Uh, Yeah, but I'm oh, but I'm not doing a, a ratio here. I'm doing equals. So it's kind of opposite. You cross multiply. So it's because m is bigger than d, right? In the ratio five to three. So m is a big a number bigger than one multiplied by d, which gives you three m equals five d. It's confusing though. I, I that's a, that's an easy make mis mistake to make. I probably would have made lots of times. Um, so 5D plus 5M equals uh, uh, 12,000. So subtract the 3M. Uh, so we know 5D is 3M. So we can put 3M plus 5M equals 12,000. So 8M equals 12,000. So M equals 12,000 over 8 equals uh, 1,500. Uh, divide that into six equal monthly payments. So it's 1,500 divided by 6 equals um, 250 we'll check that later as a decimal 11 over 40 equals 0 0.275 work out 33 over 40. So it's, so let's work out the no, 333 over 400. Okay, so let's work out 33 over 40. That is three times um, 0 0.275 equals, <laughs> oh. Can't do mental arithmetic anymore. Um, zero point. Uh, we've got six, but we hang on. Start from the right. So five carry one uh, two carry the two zero point eight two five. Uh, but to get over 400, we have to divide by 10. So it'd be 0 0.0825. Yeah, I'll go with that. 
This is the non-calculator paper. You get to use a calculator for paper two and paper three, which I'll do other days. Um, two wider shapes make an earring. The shapes are a circle with radius 21 millimeters. Twenty-one and a quarter circle. Oh, more ratios. Okay, radius of circle to radius of quarter circle seven to two. So to get the smaller one, divide by seven times by two, so it's six. Show oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Show that the radius of the quarter circle is six. I didn't know that was going to be the question. All right, so... I mean, what more do you say? You just say... Read off quarter circle equal... Oops. Equals radius off circle over seven times two because that's just how ratios work equals you get you might get points for you might not get the yeah you, you, you here you have to you have to show you're working otherwise you don't get the mark so um but there's not much i can show just say 21 over seven times 2 equals 3 times 2 equals 6 okay work out the total length of the wire in the earring total length okay so the pr circumference of the bigger circle is 2 pi R equals 42 pi. The uh, circumference of the, the full circumference of the smaller circle is 2 pi R equals um, 12 pi. So, but divide by four to get the quarter circle so that would give us 3 pi, just for this arc here, 3 pi. But then you have to add a 6, and you add a 6. So 3 pi add 6 plus 6 equals 3 pi plus 12. OK, so let's try and put that here. Um, circumference of big. Suck. Oh, I've got to disable this button on the side of my pen. It keeps... No, let go, let go. Damn it. I've got to move my finger so I don't press that button. There must be a way to disable it. Circle. How many pages are there? I don't know, I haven't checked. Uh, 28, but some of them might not have questions. Just blank pages. Circumference of big circle equals two, 2 pi r equals 42 pi. Circumference of small equals 2 pi r equals 12 pi. Uh, uh, arc quarter arc I haven't written in a long time equals 3 pi so so perim of small equals 3 pi plus 6 plus 6 equals 3 pi plus 12. So all together equals 42 pi 
plus 3 pi plus 12. So we get 45 pi plus 12. Whoa, 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 whoa not 4 pi pi. 45 pi. Well, the pages is meaningless. Some some questions might just take up lots of space, so don't worry about the pages. It's more about the marks and the questions. Um, S and T are positive integers. Smallest possible value of K. Okay, so X plus S x minus t equals x squared plus s minus t x plus s minus t. So, no, 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 take not that last bit, minus t s, minus s t. Um, so, that's that. Oh, whoops. Okay. Damn it, why is Foxit crashed? No, 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 no. Did you save? Save. There we go. Imagine a PDF PDF reader crashing. It's because I'm pressing these buttons on the pen. It's getting confused. Is that showing up on the stream? Yeah, it is. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, so so they're equivalent. So k equals s minus t, and um, s t equals forty. So these are positive integers. So for example, they could be five and eight, which is probably what they are. If that were true, then k would be three. I think k could be three. if s was 8 and t were 5. Uh, but is there anything smaller? It could be like 20 and... F yeah, yeah, that's the best you can do. Yeah, it's 3. Faisal, okay, I'm going to save after each question. All right. Faisal tries to solve that. Here is his working. Give a reason why his answer is wrong. x plus 2 equals 0, or x minus 7 equals 0. Agreed. So x equals 2, or x equals 7. The x equals 7 is correct, but x equals 2 equals 0 implies that x, sorry, x plus plus 2 equals 0 implies that x equals minus 2. Like, what more can I say? Um, Faisal didn't resolve the equation correct. All right, C equals that mess there. Work out 18C. Give your answer as a product of prime factors in index form. What the heck? 
All right, 18 equals 2 times 3 squared. So 18c, you just put in another 2 and another 3. So you would get 2 to the 11 times 3 cubed times 5 to the 6. Okay. Work out. God, what? All right. So that is so t you can divide out the two. So we end up with two to the six times eleven cubed, and then that's just you, cube root. You just divide the the index by three. So b2 squared times 11, um, which would be 4 times 11 equals 44. Three x equals half y. Circle the ratio x to y. So three x equals half y. So so y equals six x. Okay, so, so y is six times bigger than x. So it would be one to six, basically the opposite of the equals. The sequence of numbers is formed by the iterative process. U n plus one equals four over U n minus one. U one equals nine. Work out the values of U two and U three. So u2 equals 4 over u1 minus 1 equals 4 over 9 minus 1 equals 4 over 8 equals half. u3 equals 4 over u2 minus 1 equals 4 over half minus one equals four over minus a half equals minus eight. Jim buys a plant of height 20 centimeters. The graph shows how the height of the plant changes during the next four days. Work out a formula for H in terms of N. Uh, so if this line were drawn like this, it would be, so that, one, two, three, so that would be three there, and one there. So it would be h equals three n, but because it's up there, you add 20, because that's the y-intercept, the vertical intercept. So, three marks. It's just three n plus 20. Oops, three n plus 20. Just write something. Uh, intercept equals 20. So y equals mx plus c standard four oh, I got right formula all right so intercept equals 20 okay gradient equals just write something to make the examiner happy 23 minus sorry 20 23 minus 20 over 1 minus 0 equals 3. So, so 
So there, yeah, that's it, that's enough for the examiner, right? Three n plus twenty. Is there any catch there? Did they use different units? Number of days, height, centimeters. Yeah, no, that's fine. Solve the simultaneous equations. Yay, simultaneous equations. Um, so the top one, 2x plus 4y is minus 9. The bottom one is 2y 2y equals 4x minus 7. So let's take this and multiply it by 2. So we get 4y equals 8x minus 14. Uh, and now do 2 times second equation minus No, no, first equation minus two times second equation. So 2x, the 4y is cancel. And then we've got minus 9 minus 8x plus 14. So 10x equals. 5, so x equals half, y equals um, 4x minus 7 over 2 equals uh, minus 5 over 2. Circle the expression that is equivalent to x over 5 plus x over 10. So x over 5 is 2x over 10. So it'll be 3x over 10 altogether. Write down the value of 7 to the 0. 1. Work out the value of 32 to the minus 3 over 5. So it's 32, the fifth root of 32 hang on 32 to the minus 3 over 5 is 1 over 32 to 3 over 5 equals 1 over the fifth root of 32 all cubed equals 1 over 2 cubed equals 1 over 8. Write these numbers in order of size. Uh, okay. Um, 15 point, oh, what? So let's, I don't know, let's look at this one. So 47 over three is about 15 point six six recurring. That's exactly that. Um, 2.1 to the 4 uh, let's start with the 3 3 times the square root of 23 3 times the square root of 23 is well it's greater than 3 times the square root of 16 and it's less than 3 times the square root of 25 so it's between 12 and 15. Okay, that's useful. 
and 2.1 to the 4 if, uh, is um, well it's greater than 2 to the 4 which is um, 16 there we go, we've got the order. Hello MC2M. Uh, if you see me do something wrong, don't don't tell me. It will come out when we're marking it. I'm gonna mark it anyway afterwards. I've got the mark scheme here. Um, so... Uh, smallest, therefore, is... Um, three root twenty three because we said that was smaller than fifteen. Then the next one is fifteen point six, and then the next one is forty seven over three, and then the next one, um. 2.1 to the 4. I hope. <laughs> y is directly proportional to x cubed. You've been watching, enjoying it for the past half hour. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it. I didn't know if anyone would actually enjoy watching this. I'm mainly doing it out of curiosity. <laughs> Um, to see how how much I've remembered and how much the syllabus has changed. As far as I can tell, the syllabus hasn't changed. This is all standard stuff I did when I was a kid. I don't, there's nothing new being introduced yet. Y equals kx cubed. Y equals 17 when x equals 4. Work out an equation connecting y equals x. So directly proportional is just another way of saying this. That's the definition. So... 17 equals k times 4 cubed, so 64. So k equals 17 over 64. Okay guess looks ugly but I, well, this actually is, looks all right okay m is inversely proportional to root r so that is another way of saying m equals k over root r the value of r is multiplied by 4 Circle what happens to the value of m. Oh, I see. So if you had 4r here, um, if you had 4r there, it'd be like root 4r, k over root 4r, which would be like k over um, 2 root r. So it's actually halved from what it was before. Yeah. ABCD is a quadrilateral. Prove that ABCD is not a cyclic quadrilateral. Oh crap, what's a cyclic quadrilateral? Um, but yeah, if you know, don't tell me. But cyclic quadrilaterals, that, that must be a new term. I don't remember that. <laughs> Nah, it probably was. Okay, I reckon it's something like the angles. ABCD is not a cyclic quadrilateral.
cyclic quadrilateral. Maybe it's something like the angles uh, form a sequence or something like an arithmetic sequence. I don't know. It's not to scale, is it? No. So it doesn't matter what this looks like. Although usually they are sort of to scale, even though they're not meant to be to scale. Um, cyclic. I reckon it would be something like the angles form a sequence. So it would be like 20, 40, 60, 80 would form a sequence. That's Why would you ever care about that? I don't know. Um, so if it was cyclic, well, let's work out what x is first. We can do that. So, so the sum of all interior angles. Okay, how does this work again? So if you, so this is 180 minus a the angle and so on. So the sum of all those would be, those the sum of all the exterior angles would be four times 180 minus the sum of angles, right? So, but that also equals 360, because if you're walking along and you turn on each exterior angle, you'd get back to the, the facing you were starting with. So that means the sum of angles equals uh, four times 180 minus 360 equals 360. Okay, it's, it's, it's like the triangle, the sum of our interior angles is 180 for uh, the quadrilateral, regardless of what shape it is, they add up to 360. Okay. All right, see you later, food. So we can work out x then. So 4x plus x plus 36 plus, oops, plus 5x plus 30 plus 92 equals 360. All right, so that's uh, 10x plus 158 equals 360. So 10x equals 220, wait, 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 no, 202, no, no, whoa, 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 what am I doing? Yeah, 202. So x equals 20.2, is that right? I feel like it was going to be an integer. Let's see, 4x plus x plus 36 plus 5x plus 30 plus 92 equals 360. So we've got 10x and we've got 36. 66 plus 92 is 158. So 10x equals 202. So x equals 20.2. Maybe it's right. So we've worked out that the angles are. Eighty point four, eighty point eight. Even is it really not gonna look like this? Okay, maybe uh, fifty six point two, ninety two, and hundred thirty one five. It's 100. Yeah, so those are the angles. 80.8, 56.2, Now, how do we argue that's not cyclic? Pfft. 
Um, <laughs> at this point, I don't know what cyclic is, so I'm just going to say the. So the difference between the smallest and the next smallest is. 80.8 minus 56.2 equals 24.6 and the distance between I don't know the largest and the next largest is 131 minus 92 equals um, Uh, can't think of uh, 39 let's just say not the same therefore not cyclic Hopefully that's vague enough that I could maybe I'll get some other marks. Why is an obtuse angle? Which statement is true? Tick one box. Oh god. So what does obtuse mean again? It's between 180, maybe even including, I don't know, and more than 90. And acute is under 90. And it, I don't, no, it's not even equal, so greater than. And probably less than otherwise it's just straight okay so oh okay let's draw a graph zero 90 180 sine graph goes like this cosine graph goes like this So if y is between 90 and 180, then sine y is positive and cosine y is negative. one mark I don't even need to show any working oh histograms thing is histograms are very useful in the real world <laughs> but you just enter it into matplotlib or something and it'll do it for you so you don't actually need to know how to make them sample of women three of the four bars are shown oh I hate these little zigzag things my teach my physics teacher always used to tell us don't do the zigzag things. All right, um, but it just mainly means you skip a few, so it starts from like 145. Better to just put 145 at the zero point. Like I don't see the point in the squiggly lines. It's clearer then. Um, the bar for 170 height. From 170 to 180 is missing. Okay, there are 74 women in the sample. Complete the histogram. So frequency density. So to get the number of women, I think you multiply the height by the width. Because it's like density per centimeter or something. So this would be 2 times 5, so 10. This would be 3 times 
10, so 30. This one would be 4 times 5, 20. So that's 60. So what have we got left? 74 minus 60 equals 14. So we need 14 for, for the final lot. So if the base, the, the, the width is 10, then we would need 1.4 for that to work. Just make sure we're getting the marks. Okay, I think that's how you do histograms. Let's also just fill in that as well, 14. Uh, the, the, I think, okay, let's just put some more working here so it's clear. So, um, uh, two times 155, minus 150 equals 10, three times 165 minus 15. You never know what they want you to write to get all the marks. Equals 30, four times 170 minus 165 equals 20, equals some of that is 70 is 60 and then yeah okay it's clear enough 26a got half an hour left show that 14 over root 7 can be written in the form a root B. okay 14 over root 7 multiply top and bottom by root 7 so we get 14 root 7 over 7 equals 2 root 7 done yeah work out that Give your answer as an integer. Two. So are you allowed to just multiply the inner things? I think you are. So it's like square root of. Ten times AT times 18. I think you're allowed to do that. So it'd be two times square root of two times five times um, two to the four times five times two times three squared equals two, two root two to the six times three squared times five squared equals two times, so you just divide each of those indices by two, so it'll be two cubed times three times five. Yeah, so, so what, 16 times three times five? Uh, what's that? 16 times 5 is 80 times 3, 240. A and B are similar solid s cylinders. Similar solid cylinders. Base area of A to base area of B is 9 to 25. Complete these ratios. Curved surface area. Oh my god. Okay, so cylinders, so the areas are 9 to 25, so the curved surface area should also be 9 to 25, because it's still an area. So there's no reason why it wouldn't be, right? 9 to 25. Uh, 
and the height is one dimension, so you're basically square rooting. So is it simple as just doing three to five? Let's think that through. So base area is that. So you'd have A, if A was the base area, it would be nine, 25a equals 9b, so a equals 9 over 25b. So if we wanted the square root of that area for whatever reason, we'd get a one-dimensional line, whatever that interpretation would mean. So it would be 3 over 5 square root b. So some line segment is 3 fifths of some other line segment in the other one. Yeah, so that should also hold for the height and every other line, because it, they all they all are in the same ratio. Okay, hope so. Factorize fully. One hundred forty-four minus four x squared. Factorize. Okay. What? So just. Oh, I see. They. Were, they <laughs> Depends what you how you want me to factorize. I could take the twos out. Okay, I think they want to do this. 12 plus 2x, 12 minus 2x, done. I mean, there's no intermediate step there, you just go straight from that to that. difference of two squares. All right. But how do I get the second mark? Should I just say difference of two squares? That's a standard formula. All right. It's not even a standard formula. It's a standard pattern. All right. The graph of y equals x cubed plus six is translated four units to the right. So the new graph should be, you do x minus six. I think this is what you do, cubed plus six. Because it's like, you're now looking at what x value would have been um, six units to the left before. Four, four, four. Change that six to a four. Work out f of x. So we know immediately that y equals x minus 4 cubed plus 6. Now we have to expand that. Oh, I hate this. So we do y equals x minus 4 squared times x minus 4 plus 6 equals x squared minus 8x plus 16 x minus 4 plus 6 equals x cubed minus 4x squared minus 8x squared plus 32x plus 16x minus 64 plus 6. Equals x cubed minus 12 x squared plus 48 x minus 58. So A is minus 12, B is 48, C is 58. Always found that there are many hexes in math. Yes, <laughs> indeed there are. 
Okay, I hope I expanded that correctly. It's four marks. Oh, just, uh, they know what I mean. No question on this page. That's it, end of the paper. All right, I can go look through a couple of those questions I wasn't sure about. Okay, I'm fine with that one, fine with that one, fine with that one, fine with that one. This one, let me just go over this again. So, cosine x equals adjacent over hypotenuse. I know 18 is half, so x equals cos. Okay, I'm, I'm happy up till that last line. Inverse cosine of half. So I'm claiming that cosine 60 equals half. Is that true? Uh, so we've got our diagram sine zero hundred eighty ninety thirty sixty so this is sine so cosine goes like this ah no 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 that's fine So it starts off flat and goes steeper later on. So actually that makes sense that it would be 60 and not 30. It's certainly not 45. Yeah, 60, that sounds right. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Neg negative. Um. Um, yep, okay. Seven, I think that's right. I checked it by adding them up again. Shorter side, this was a bit, numbers looked a bit weird, but we can now work backwards from that and see if that makes sense. So work out the length of the longer side. So we can now, we, we're now claiming that's 22.75. So add everything together. So the perimeter is 22.75 times 2, so that's 40, 5.5, plus 13 equals 58.5. Perimeter is 58.5, so does this agree with what they said? The length of the shorter side is one ninth of the perimeter. So is 60.5 one ninth of 58.5? So 9 times 6.5 equals 9 times 6 is 54, 9 times 0.5 is 4.5, so 58.5. Yes, it is. Okay, so this working backwards seems to indicate this is correct. Uh, easy. Well, yeah, easy. So would this make sense? It would be six thirty fifty four. Six thirty fifty four, and add them all together, we get ninety. Yep. This one. The number actually was all right in the end. So work out her monthly payments. So I'm claiming she spends 250 a month, which in total would be 250 times six. So 1,500. So I'm saying she spends 1,500 on the monthly payments and the deposit would be, divide that by five, times by three, so 900. So she's paying a deposit and monthly payments. Add those together, we get 2,400, which is that. Yep, I work backwards and that seems to match. 11 over 40 is 0 0.275. So to get 33 over 40, we multiply by three. So 
So yeah, uh, and then divide by ten to get four hundred. Okay. Two wire shapes make an earring. The shapes are that and that. Six. Oh, don't forget to put the units. Sometimes you get marked down for not writing the units. So I'm pretty fine with that. Work out the total length of the wire in the earring. So the total length is 2 pi r, 21, 42 pi. Circle of the small is 2 pi, but to get a quarter, no, it's 12 pi, but to get the quarter arc divided by 4, we get 3 pi. And the two, add the two radius radii, 3 pi plus 12, add everything together, 42 pi plus 3 plus 12, 45 pi plus 12, yep. Yeah. 8 and 5 multiplied to get 40, and the difference is 3. K has to be positive, so it can't be minus 3. So, yep. Faisal tries to solve. Yeah, clear enough. Um, 18C, so it's... Just put in another 2 and another 2 3s. Yep. Work out that as an integer. So we divide out the two, and then just divide each index by three. Yep. Okay, let's check this one. U2 is four over U1 minus one equals four over nine minus one equals four over eight equals half. U3 equals four over U2 minus one equals four over half minus one, four over minus a half, which is minus, 4 divided by half, which is minus 2 times 4 equals 8. Minus 8. This one I was happy with. Solve the simultaneous equations. 4y equals 8x minus 14. And I took... There's probably better ways of solving simultaneous equations. I don't know. This is what I was doing because it seemed to match I mean it made the two X's match so no, I mean it made the four Y's match um, subtract the second one from the first one so we get two X on the left hand side and on the right hand side we get minus nine minus eight X plus 14 so five ten X equals five X equals half y equals 4x minus 7 over 2 so 2 minus 7 over 2 so minus 5 over 2 yeah yep 7 to 0 is 1 yep Mm, okay, this one. So this one was 15.6. This one was 15.66. This one we said was bigger than 2 to the 4. Which is 16. And it's bigger than that, so it's actually the biggest. And this one we said is less than 16 but bigger than, hang on, less than 15, 3 times the square root of 25, 3 times 5, 15, less than 15, but bigger than 12. So that only gives us enough information to say that's the smallest, because it's less than 15, which is less than any of the others. So it's 3 root 23 root 6 root, 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 root. Yeah, okay. I think so. Y equals kx squared. Yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah. 
So we multiply by 4, the other one will go down, but not by 4, but by the square root. But, so 2, divide by 2, yeah. Oh god, this one. Let's check these numbers. So we know they have to add up to 360. And we know that because anyway, that's the case for square. 90, 90, 90, 90. And if you were to move it, squash it, move it around, that wouldn't change what they sum to. <coughs> so we got 4x plus x plus 36 plus 5x plus 30 plus 92 equals 360. So 10x, 36 plus 66 plus 68 plus 158. Take away the 158, 202, 20.2. 20 .2. So x is 20.2, 20 that gives us all the angles. And so I said that the differences, and I don't know what cyclic means, so I could lose marks here, but I'm just guessing it means the angles don't form an arithmetic sequence. I can't imagine why you would ever care about the angles forming, it, forming an arithmetic sequence. cyclic contralateral but so is a square a cyclic cyclic contralateral probably yes because you're just adding zero each time I, I, I think I've got that wrong but I can't think of any other meaning of cyclic contralateral Why is an obtuse angle, so sine, yeah, yeah, it's fine. This one, happy with. Show that 14 over root seven, so it's uh, multiply top and bottom by root seven. Yeah. Okay, 10, 80, 18, so it's 2 times 5. Mm -hmm. 2 to 4 times 5, 2 times 3 squared. So then in, we've got all together 4, 5, 6, 2 to the 6, 3 squared, 5 squared. So it'll be half those indices. So we get 2 cubed, 3, 5. So 2 times 2 to the cube is 16. 16 times 3 times 5, 16 times 5 is 80, 80 times 3 is 240. Yeah. Maybe cyclic quadrilateral just means that each angles are equals. Each, each angles are equals? What do you mean each angle? So like, opposites are equals? Or all four are equal? That would make sense, maybe. But I've gone with that. I won't change it now, but... Um, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, now that I think about it, that makes more sense. That's more useful, at least, than whatever I said about the arithmetic sequence thing, which is useless. I can't think of any reason for that. So areas always stay in the same proportion. So it's still 9 to 25, no matter what area you choose on the cylinder. It's always going up by factor. And the height will always be the square root, so it's 3, 5. Similarly, the volume, you can use the same argument. It'd be like 27 to 125 or something. Factorize fully. Well, this is not fully, is it? What I should have done, yeah, okay. So what I should have done is taken the two out. So it's actually four. Uh, so we take two out of each. What I really should have done is taken it out beforehand, so it would have been... So I, okay, that's probably where the other mark is. So really I should have taken the four out to begin with, which would have been... Um, 
So we take the four out, so it'd be 36 minus x squared, and then it's four, six plus x, six minus x. Yeah, I would have lost a mark there if I just gave that. Check your answers, kids. Can't imagine any kids are actually watching this or will watch it when I upload it. <laughs> I hope they don't, because this is probably not that useful for learning your GCSE maths. There's probably better YouTube videos out there. <laughs> that could be useful, just seeing how how someone thinks through it, but... Um, maths are for adults. Well, no, I, I don't know. This types of maths is for kids only, because you don't do maths like this, you know, once you get to university level. You're just using calculators and spreadsheets, and at best, you might be doing algebra, like expanding brackets, that stuff you do, but all this other crap about inverse signs and stuff, it's hardly ever comes up. <laughs> In histogram, you would just use some Python library, which generates a histogram, and would also choose the best widths and heights to make it look nice. So you don't have to do that. Mental math is common in engineering. Yeah, I can imagine that. But you, but being good at mental math could lose you marks here because you might just write down the answer without writing down your working. <laughs> and sometimes you lose marks for not showing your working. All right, this one. Okay, I've got three minutes left. So translate four units to the right. That means you subtract x because every time you're looking at a y x y value in the new graph, you're looking at what x it would have been for the x that's four spaces to your left. Yes. Okay. So y equals x minus four cubed plus six. So it's y equals x. So expand the square, you get x squared minus 8x plus 16. And then expand again, so x cubed, to do this in the right order, x cubed minus 4x squared minus 8x squared plus 32x plus 16x minus 64. plus six. So that's minus 12x squared, 32 plus 48x. Yep. That's it. All right. Time to mark it. Now I won't plug my mouse back in because I don't have enough USB slots to deal with all these things. All right, what do I reckon I've got? So at this point you can speak freely. <laughs> Are there any questions you know I got wrong, like a mistake I made? Well, no, no, no. we'll do this in order when we get to the questions. Um, well, no, actually, you can speak. You can say them now if you can think of any. Um, I reckon I got everything right except for the cyclic quadrilateral. I don't think I made any mistakes anywhere else. Everything seems to seems to to not only look good, like the numbers just look clean most of the time. But I also worked backwards from some of the answers to confirm that they work. So I think I got all the marks. I might have lost one or two marks for not following a certain standard or something that I don't know about. Um, but the cyclic quadrilateral thing, I probably lost two marks there, maybe one or two, for not knowing the definition. But I still probably would get at least two marks for doing the calculations. So I reckon I got out of how many marks? 80. I reckon I got 77. 
I'm being optimistic here. <laughs> Do you have any different ideas of what I got? Alright, let's open up the mark scheme. Yeah. Okay, so I'll try and just go through these. Um, I'm gonna, and I guess on a spreadsheet, I can also just keep track of the marks. Oh wow! So this is this is what the, they're given the people who are marking, and they have to follow these strict guidelines and there's all kinds of so method marks are awarded for a correct method which could lead to a correct answer so it basically n means method marks a means accuracy marks you get a if you got it right you just get a you get the a marks all this other stuff uh, don't worry about it too much i guess <laughs> we'll figure it out as we go along Erased or crossed out work that is still legible should be marked. So if they've crossed stuff out, you can still give them marks if it was right what they crossed out. But if they rubbed it out, then that's their problem. Okay, all right. So starting from the top. One, 19 over four. Um, yep, I guess I'll just, is this coming up on the stream? Yeah, it is, okay. Uh, next one, three minus two. Yep. Uh, a million. Yep, and then six over five. All right, question five. The answer should be 60. Cosine and 9 over 18 identified, and you get A1 mark for getting 60. So I got the 60, and I showed cosine and 9 over 18. So yeah, I got the two marks. Strong negative and then no correlation. Condone incorrect spelling if intention is clear. <laughs> okay. Um, hang on. So, strong and negative, no correlation. Got it. All right, so it should be 12, in, so it should look like this, 12, 11, 33, 24. 12, 11, 33, 24, yeah. Do we just get all four marks? Let's check. 12 in correct position, 24 in correct position. 12, 24, 11, and 33 gets you B1. Yeah, yeah. I think we've got all four marks. This is how to give them addition. If they didn't get it right, then you, you it tells you how to mark them. Um, but I got it right, so I get the four marks. Hello, Ku. We're on the um, marking now. Uh, I can just slowly scroll through this, but I've already covered the first five questions, but this is what we've done so far. So it's like circling top-heavy fractions, column vector, easy stuff, square cube number, reciprocal, this one I got a little bit stuck on to work out the size of angle X because um, I didn't remember cosine 60 is half. I had to draw a diagram and then I kind of inferred it. Um, so I got the marks for that, fortunately, but it, I got stuck on that. Uh, scatter graph, Venn diagram, I love those. 
All right, question eight. This one, I hope I got it right. The number looks a bit weird. 22.75. Yep, I'm pretty sure I got the full marks there. I, I don't know how exactly you break down the marks, but I, I it looks like I had all that stuff in in my in my way of writing it. So yeah. And today is the first day. I think this, today is the day that the GCSEs start, and they'll go on for the next month until June something or other. So I don't know what papers are held today, but probably not maths. I think maths is held in June. Okay. Two and eight, yep. Six. Well, wow, there's lots of ways to uh, break this down. Okay, six. Yep. Yep. Wow, so many different alternatives. That 22.75 was resolved on my side by doing 6.5 times 9 minus 2 times 6.5. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So many different alternatives. Can you imagine being one of these markers? I mean, if I were doing it, if I just saw the right answer and a bunch of stuff, I would give them the marks. But I don't think the, guy, the markers are allowed to do that, really. In university, they would totally do that. They're way more lax in university. <laughs> um, but I think in school, they, they're just super strict about these things. I, for sure, if my professors just saw a right answer and a bunch of a bunch of stuff, they would just give just give you the marks. All right, ten, two hundred and fifty is the right answer, and yeah, I'm giving myself the method marks. It's, it's I'm sure it's some variation of what they've written there. All right, 0 0.0825, what, two marks. 0 0.0825, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I've got four marks so far, haven't I? My geography teacher was snorting chalk. <laughs> I am gonna take a geography paper as well in the list. Um, I'm worried about that because a, I imagine the syllabus has changed a lot because the world has changed a lot, politics in particular, and uh, I don't remember a lot of stuff from geography. I don't even have coloring pencils either. I'm gonna have to use my tablet to color in things. All right, 12. Show that the radius of the quarter circle is six. Um, three times two equals six. You get the mark if you say three times two equals six. <laughs> so yeah. B, 45 pi. I could have made a mistake here. For, wait, did I? S yeah, yeah, I did say 45 pi plus 12. Yep, I'm giving myself the marks for that. Three. You probably need method marks here. So A, okay, if you get three, you get one mark. And X, yeah, I did expand those. Or s equals eight and t equals five. Yeah, I think it's clear enough. All right. Faisal 
tries to um okay 13b Faisal didn't resolve the equation correctly is what I said and x should be minus 2 e.g. it should be minus 2 you get the mark for just saying it should be minus 2 okay nice Two to the eleven, three cubed, five to the six. Two to eleven, three cubed, five to the six. Yeah. And then the next one is forty-four. Doesn't sound. Yeah, I did get that. Okay. All right. One to six, and then half a minus eight. 1 to 6, half a minus 8, and a bunch of explanations. Yep, I'm sure that's worth its marks. Where am I? What's oh seventeen? Okay, so we need to get to three m plus twenty. Where does it say? No, oh, no, wait. What question is this? Seventeen. Wrong question. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Three, three n plus twenty is correct. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm pretty sure I got that. x equals half, y equals minus 5 over 2. Minus 5 over 2, yeah. 2 and a half. I don't like mixed fractions. Yeah, well, yeah, minus 5 over 2. Alright, everything's correct so far. 3x over 10, and then 1. 3x over 10 and 1, yep, correct. And then 0 0.125 or 1 over 8. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. All right, this one. Let's have a look at what they've said for the method box here. This will be interesting. Largest, 2.1 to the 4. Smallest, 3 root 23 and those two in between mark the answer only you don't need to show any method marks so it's 3 root 23 15.6 47 over 3 2.1 to the 4 correct y equals 17 over 64 x cubed Allow the proportion sign. What is the proportion sign? I've forgotten. Is it like a wavy line? I think it's like the tilled wavy line. Not that anyone ever uses that. Oh, actually, no. That probably is used in higher mathematics. Or at least higher science. I don't think you really use it in maths. You'd rather just say x. You'd rather just say y equals kx cubed for some k then actually use some wavy symbol, but I don't know, like physics probably uses it. K, uh, so divide by two. Yep. Okay, the quadrilateral. This is where I probably lost a mark. The wavy line in the equal is also used. 
in the equals, so one straight line and one wavy line underneath. Okay, I've never seen it like that, but yeah, sure, that could be a convention. All right, how many marks can I scrape here? Um, probably not many. Oh, hang on, probably half of them. Uh, I'm trying to make sense of what they're saying here. So I had, oh, no, I didn't even, did I get the numbers right? I don't think I did. 4x plus 92 is 180. Oh, no, okay, I didn't say that. I think you were right. I think it means opposites must be equal. So if opposites were equal, then you would just say 4x plus 92 equals 180 because they're opposites or something, I don't know. But I did the the lower one, 20, the, so 4x plus x plus 36 plus 5x plus 30 plus 92 equals 360. I did write that, I wrote exactly that. So I got that mark, so I got M1. X equals either 22, 19, or 20.2. Wait, what? It should be 20.2 is what I got. Where did I write? Yeah, yeah, I got 20.2. So I got the second mark. Equals is for numerical data, homeomorphism. It's for homotopy. Interesting. I mean, I've studied homotopy before, but I don't remember using like, like that. I. Oh. I don't know what I use. I I feel like I was using straight line with a wavy line underneath for homotopy. And same for isomorphism. I, I feel like the straight line was always on top. I don't know. Like the wavy line on top looks weird to me. Um, Uh, my god, this question is, oh, this question is long, I mean the mark scheme is long for this, there's three pages of variations, I think I got M1 and A1, but Is this how to decipher this? I got at these first two boxes M1 and A1. How many marks is it? It's four marks. So M1, A1, where are the other marks? Do they not call them M2 and A2? So this is really confusing. <laughs> Oh, so each alternative method, I see, all right. So you have to look at each block and see if they've satisfied that block. So I'm looking at this alternative method one. Works out the value of X using two different methods and shows they're different. Okay, that's not what I did, but close. Uses angle sum of quadrilateral to work at X and then shows opposite angles do not sum to 180. That's what I did except for the last bit. So I did show that top one, so I get M1. I did get A1. but I didn't get the next M1 and A1 because I just didn't show that final statement. So I got two marks. So, so far we've lost two. That's an easier way to calculate it. So cyclic means the opposites sum to 180. What was it you said? 
Not quite that. I don't think it was. I don't think you said quite that, was it? Opposite angles sum to 180 when it's cyclic. So it's basically saying it's like a kite, it's sort of symmetrical. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> I've never ever seen a cyclic quadrilateral used after GCSE or A level. All right, 24. Sine y greater than zero, cosine y less than zero. Yep. Histogram. So we want to get, we want to put a bar in which goes up to 1.4. Okay, is that right? Bar drawn from 170 width 10 and height 1.4. Yeah. Yeah. Four marks there. I guess because you got because 10, 30, 20, how, how many marks? 10, 20, 30, yeah, I get the M1 mark. Yeah, I get all those marks. They're all there. All right, two root seven. Yep. Uh, 240. <laughs> But you get all marks if you just write down 240, I think. I wouldn't. Uh. Okay, next one. 9 to 25, 3 to 5. B0, what does B0 mean? It should mean you get no marks if you've got it the wrong way around. Okay, nine to 25, three to five. Yep, that's right. This is the one, this is the one I got wrong first time, but then when I checked, I found my mistake. Minus four, X plus six, X minus six. Oh, I didn't take the minus out, but that's not. I mean, x six minus x is no more is 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 not different. To x minus six is it? Oh no, they do count that. Okay, yeah, yeah, my one is counted. Okay, it's not necessarily any more factorized. Okay. Okay, this this one. Minus 12 plus 48 minus 58. Minus 12 plus 48 minus 58. Yep. That's for sure. I got those four marks. That's it. So I got. Blah, 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 blah. 78. That's all right. I knew I would lose. I mean, that's pretty much the most I was expecting. I knew I would all. I was bound to lose two marks or something to some weird rule that I don't remember. In this case, it was cyclic quadrilateral, and there's probably going to more be more in the next two papers. So the next two papers are calculator papers. So there we go. Seventy-eight. That should be the top grade on its own. But you have to use yeah, but you have to add all the papers together to really calculate it. Top grade being nine. So I need to make a note of that. Um well, there we go then. <laughs> um I'm just wondering if I just should tomorrow do a different subject or just carry on with maths. It would be nice to get maths rounded up, but just wrapped up fully so that I don't leave that hanging. So maybe tomorrow I'll do paper two for maths. If not tomorrow, then the day after, I guess. 
and then there's one more paper after that. It doesn't feel di I, I I was actually expecting it to be very different to to what I studied in school. This feels pretty spot on. So this was this paper was 2020, two years ago. You can't get 2021 because that paper is used for the mocks for these students incoming, and it only gets released after they've done their mocks. Well, I guess so. Next year, 21 will be released. So the the, the most recent can get is 2020 um, and that's like 15 years since I've done it it's all the same stuff so far so yep yeah. so it looks like my career prospects are uh, not in jeopardy yet. Let's save those annotations. <sighs> All right. Well, thanks for watching MC2M. I'm glad you enjoyed it and Ku and uh, food who left. Um, <laughs> oh, let me also show the Excel thing. That's basically what it looks like. So it used to be A stars. So for where, so what I got as a kid were nines, which are A stars, and and they don't really distinguish eights and well, I don't know. It's, it's not it's not a one to one mapping, so it's a bit weird. But this is what I believe are the equivalent grades. I had A minus then A stars, so it looks like the new system uses one to nine. But I think. This is how they map. So I think I got seven for biology and nine for everything else. Um, and computer science we didn't have. <laughs> and I'm predicting for maths I'll get a nine because I'd be very sad if I didn't. And computer science, this is a guess. I think I'll get nine, but then again, the syllabus could be really weird and have lots of weird stuff, which isn't really computer science. Maybe more like IT, I don't know. So I, I could be way off, but I, I hope I will get a nine because because it would be really sad if I didn't. And everything else, I'm not really predicting decent grades for, but electronics and physics, you would hope a lot of that is just maths. All right, that's enough. See you next time.